Since a gallbladder attack from gallstones can be pretty much the worst pain that a human can experience, I thought we should talk about what causes gallstones so that you can avoid that stuff. I think avoiding that stuff would be better. Let's jump in. TC Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor or licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. So bile is this soapy substance that's made by our liver and then the liver puts it down in the gallbladder so that it can be stored and concentrated and wait to be called on for use. Now bile is a really big deal because it, it helps us emulsify our fats and we really need to emulsify or break down those fats so the body can use those correctly. Bile is also a major part of the digestive process because once food is acidified, the bile neutralizes those acids and also helps us really bust that food apart and get all the nutrients out. Bile is also a key player in detoxification. The, the liver filters out a lot of toxins, puts it into the bile, and then the bile moves through the intestinal tract so those toxins can be taken out the back door when we poop like a champion. So you can see that bile is really crucial for a lot of health aspects. And it's a really big deal. So the problem is that there's a lot of mistakes that we make today that can thicken up that bile so that it doesn't flow correctly. And if bile is not flowing correctly, that means it's just kind of sitting there in the gallbladder. Now remember that the gallbladder is meant to concentrate that bile so that it can make that bile more effective. But it doesn't have like an off switch for the concentration you know, thing that it's doing. So if bile isn't moving correctly because we made mistakes that caused it to be too thick and sticky to flow properly, it continues to concentrate to the point where it will create stones. And that's a way that we can create gallstones by that continuous concentration of the bile. Now, let's talk about some of the mistakes that we make that thicken up this bile. One of the biggest mistakes we made is, is when we do low-fat diets. And we did this for a really long time. It was a really big mistake. And we understand now that it's a mistake and that the body needs fats and that consuming dietary fats is not what makes us be fat. We, we know all that stuff now. And if you're behind on that, you're going to want to catch up a little bit because the low-fat diet craze was a huge mistake. Now, why this is a mistake for bile flow and the, and the gallstones is because the fats are what call on the gallbladder to say, hey, we need to send some bile down here to help us emulsify these fats. So if you're not consuming a lot of fats, then the gallbladder doesn't get called on as often. And that bile will sit there longer and concentrate more and become too thick and sticky to flow correctly. Another problem that we make is that we eat too many grains and processed foods. These also seem to thicken up the bile so that the bile won't flow correctly. And again, if it's not flowing, it's going to continue to concentrate and cause a lot of problems. Now I'm going to take these next three mistakes and kind of clump them together because they can all create the same problem. And that's calorie restriction diets. Uh, if you're a female that's had a, a variety of babies or if you're a person over 40. And the reason that all of I clump all these together is because all of these problems can raise estrogen in the body. A calorie restriction diet is a mistake because you're starving the body and it's like, hey, I'm kind of freaking out. I kind of need some stuff here. What you got? Oh, you got nothing for me? Well, I'm just going to raise these stress hormones that help my body function without the nutrients and the resources that you're not giving me. So that's a really big mistake to really restrict your calories and uh, try to lose weight that way. The problem with having a lot of babies is that to build a baby takes a lot of resources. And so having one baby can really strip the mother from a lot of these reserve resources and it all goes towards building this human. So when she starts shooting out kids all over the place, that's a lot of resources that she's losing and that lack of resources will cause the body to raise stress hormones like estrogen and estrogen really seems to thicken up our bile when the levels are too high and restrict the bile's ability to flow correctly. Once it's not flowing, it's going to get overly concentrated and form those stones. Same thing with being over 40. It is, there's a lot of uh, problems. Uh, our digestion doesn't seem to work as well. We don't seem to have the ability to get as many nutrients. Plus, we've accumulated a lot more toxins and problematic issues like that, which can raise stress hormones. So all of these things can raise estrogen levels. And there's a variety of other things can, that can raise estrogen levels. We could eat a lot of estrogenic foods like you know soy and you know processed junk like that. 
Um, we can be on birth control that can raise estrogen. We can be on uh, hormone therapy that a lot of a lot of people want to raise estrogen levels now because when you raise estrogen, it can help relieve a lot of symptoms. And that's because you're raising this stress hormone that helps the body uh, take other backup routes to help the body function correctly. Raising these estrogen levels can cause the body to kind of pull resources from your tissues or your bones or your organs and say, hey, I'm going to use these since I'm not getting the resources that I need. So that can help relieve some symptoms, and that's why it's so popular. All the cool kids do estrogen therapy now because they use it and some symptoms improve. The problem is this elevated estrogen level is thickening up the bile so that it doesn't flow correctly, and that can cause a wide variety of health issues on its own, not even to mention the gallstones that we're talking about in this video. Another issue that can thicken up the bile is high insulin. So that can be another problem of consuming a low fat diet. When you eat a really low amount of fat, you're often increasing the amount of carbs that you eat. So when you're increasing the amount of carbs, you're keeping insulin high a lot longer and that high insulin can also thicken up our bile. Now there's also a, another problem like a called a catabolic imbalance where the body kind of stays in this breakdown mode most of the time and it doesn't move into the rebuild and repair mode at night like it's supposed to. So that can thicken up our bile and, and create a lot of problems that way. And to understand if that's a problem for you, we teach people in all of our books and, and courses how to look at your own physiology at home using simple tools that you can pick up like at a health food store or a pharmacy. And that can help you figure out if you're leaning too far on this catabolic side. So. I'll put a link in the description below where you can download my book for free, my Kick Your Fat in the Nuts book, and that kind of walks you through how to look at those tests and figure out if maybe a catabolic imbalance was a problem for you. We also have a free online digestion course if you rather do courses than reading books, and that's totally free. I'll put the link down below where you can uh, check that out as well. But if you've had any of these issues that have caused your bile to become too thick and sticky to flow correctly, then you may need to take some steps to get it moving right. Now in just a minute I'll share a video with five steps that you can take to thin your bile so that it will start moving better. But let's say for instance that you have already formed some stones because your bile was not moving correctly and uh, you kind of concentrated too much bile and it turned into stones. So you may have some stones there. If that's the case, the best way to start breaking those down is to help the bile move. You want to get movement going through though so that those stones can start to disintegrate a little bit. Now a lot of people like to use malic acid and they say that malic acid can help melt those stones down a little bit. A lot of people will talk about drinking apple juice because it's high in malic acid. I just don't love that route because uh, all the sugar that's in apple juice and that's going to raise insulin level which can thicken up your bile and be a problem. Now we do often use uh, a supplement uh, magnesium malate because that has a lot of malic acid in it but we need to understand uh, how to use magnesium correctly a little bit. And I teach that in my books and that free course um, in the description below because if someone is leaning too far on that catabolic side, then taking too much magnesium could push them even further into that catabolic side, which could result in the bile becoming too thick. So you really want to know what you're doing with your unique bioindividuality. It's not about finding a remedy and somebody says, oh, well, this supplement will help this thing because uh, most issues can be caused by a variety of problems and it, it's really specific to the person. You really want to look at your body and understand uh, how to work with your body chemistry. That can be very important. Now, once you can get bile moving a little bit and help that uh, get rid of that sludge that may have been building up, well, now here's a problem that you want to keep in mind. If you have stones in your gallbladder and, and your gallbladder is all sludged up with this really thick bile and there's some stones in there, you may not have any kind of pain or any kind of discomfort because the stones are stuck in one place. But once you start to thin the bile so that it can flow correctly, which you really want to do this, you really have no choice or it's going to lead to a lot of health issues. Once you get it moving, then those stones can move, which means that one of those stones could get stuck in a bile duct and that's what creates a gallbladder attack. It's that stone blocking the duct completely so when the gallbladder is squeezing and trying to get things to move, 
it can't move and it can create a lot of pain. So when you get that moving, a stone can move around. Just don't view it like, oh man, thinning my bile gave me a, ball, a gallbladder attack. It made, made me have gallstones. That's not what happened. You had gallstones for a long time before. They just weren't moving because the bile wasn't flowing in wet at all. So just be aware of that and understand what may be going on and you might have to take more aggressive steps to thin that bile faster and to maybe take some steps that can melt down those stones. So you can see that it's not always about, hey, what step is going to fix my problem? Sometimes it's about what things do I need to stop doing wrong? What, what, what things are, are creating this issue that I can change and make different choices with? So now if you need to get some bile thinned out and, and get it flowing, uh, that free course that we talked about will walk you through how to do that. It can help you understand tests that you can look at to see, is my bile problematic? Is it not flowing correctly? And, and do I need to fix that? But for right now, watch our video on five steps that can improve bile flow and that'll give you a lot of insights. I can't wait to hear about your results.